Hi, I'm Omnisunday. Spinosaurus is a theropod dinosaur that's infamous for the confusion it causes in paleontological conversations around the world. I'm going to try my best to describe Spinosaurus as up to date as possible, but knowing Spino, it won't be up to date the week after this comes out. Just bear with me, I'm trying my best. So in this video, I'll do my best attempt of going through the history of Spinosaurus restorations with a few different sources I listed in the description of this video. Spinosaurus was first named and discovered in 1915, but its teeth were found in the 1840s and assumed to be crocodile teeth. Its 1920s descriptions had the tripod kangaroo Godzilla pose, and it was described as slow and lumbering. Some guy at the time said it was 15 meters long and heavier than 6 metric tons in weight. Unfortunately, the original specimen was lost in World War II, so this is where modern spino depictions get muddy. Obviously, these original depictions were the least accurate, despite the more complete specimen they had at the time. Even then, they knew this was a weird animal. The field of paleontology was much slower back then than it is today, and it wasn't until the 90s that scientists started to question the outdated models of dinosaurs. Jurassic Park was big at the time, and most depictions of dinosaurs reflected their monstrous and shrink-wrapped designs. Spinosaurus was skinny, with long legs and a thin tail. It still wasn't considered to be aquatic, and the sail was thought to have more to do with thermal regulation. It looked like your average B-movie dinosaur, but with a sail on its back. I basically just drew Spino from the 2001 Jurassic Park, but that was the biggest influence on other paleo artists at the time anyway. In the 2000s, more remains were found of Spinosaurus that proved it was aquatic. This was proposed in 2014, but it wasn't more widely accepted until 2020 when a new paper described the specimens in better detail. It's depicted with a crocodile-like maw, a sail on its back, and a bit of a paddle tail. There's still some debate about how aquatic it was, but more people can agree it was at least semi-aquatic. It could have had a variety of stripes or patterns, but probably didn't have feathers or quills. Here's the final art. This scuba diver's nightmare probably maxed out at 14 meters long and 7 tons in weight. Its anterior bite force was more than 4,800 newtons, and its posterior bite force was almost 12,000. Its longest spines were taller than me, and it had broad shoulders with stocky arms. Like living aquatic predators, its jaws were built for snapping at prey rather than a slow crush. It probably ate fish and other stuff in the water, but may have also preyed on land animals occasionally. The sail could be for swimming, thermal upregulation, display, or any combination of the three. It may have had webbed feet and hands, I do them like that because I think it's cool. This version of Spino was talked about in studies from 2022, but a new one came out this year that once again tries to change things. It's still new and very much not confirmed though, so take it with a grain of salt. The animal this study was done on isn't even Spinosaurus aegypticus, but a member of the Spinosauridae family called Irritator Challengeri. Definitely an irritating challenge. That joke has probably been made a million times, sorry. But yeah, this study says that Irritator could have extended its lower jaw horizontally, kind of like a pelican kind of thing. So if we want to be a little silly, we could say that related animals like Spino could have done that too. I'd say it probably doesn't do that, but Spinosaurus is such a weird animal that I wouldn't even be surprised. Next thing you know, it's going to have wheels. That's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed my college junior level take on Spinosaurus. I'm not even a paleontology major. So please don't take anything I say as fact, and I would love to see comments telling me how wrong I am and every little thing I messed up. Just be nice, we're all into dinosaurs. So if you made it this far, check out my new Patreon. Support me for a dollar a month and you can join my friend Captain Kobop in having your name at the end of my videos. Links in the description. My next paleontology video will be on Velociraptor, but maybe before then you'll enjoy my growing catalog of speculative evolution videos. I'm considering adding a speculative evolution aspect to these ones, like about what the animal would look like if its descendants were still alive on Earth today with no other changes. Let me know if that sounds interesting to you. Consider subscribing for all of that content, and thanks for watching!